Far From Zion by Charles London. This book will be out in October. And um, some of you may know Charles London. He was the author of the book, One Day the Soldiers Came. Um, he's also a, a former YA librarian from the New York Public Library. Go librarians. Um, this book really explores the Jewish diaspora in, in some of the unlikely uh, places. Um, everyone's history, everyone's culture has a story. And in this particular book, um, Charles talks about the, the Jewish experience and how um, several people flew, fl uh, fled from persecution and established their own communities um, in some unlikely places. And then after a certain amount of time, some people did go back to Israel, but then he, this book really talks about those that stayed where they set up camp, if you will, and um, decided to grow their community there. Um, he also cites Bentonville, Arkansas as the fastest growing Jewish community in America. Who knew? Um, this actually, it, this really does talk about those that stayed and, um, and how they tried to create a, a, a global community, of, a peaceful global community with their neighbors. Um, I guess on a personal note for, for Charles, um, he was raised a Reformed Jew, and he, but he knew very little of um, the Jewish history and the Jewish practices. And so I think for, th for him, this book was, um, was eye-opening for him because he was, a, by doing the research um, into the Jewish community, he came to terms with his own background and his own um, heritage, if you will, and now really appreciates his connection that he has as being a Jew. So definitely check this book out in October. All right, I've got quite a few slides in a row, so this is the first one. <laughs> I am Neurotic and So Are You by Liana Kong. Isn't that a great title? I absolutely love the blog this book comes from. It is IamNeurotic.com. Has anyone been? Well, you should. It's a place where neurotics of all kinds can come together and anonymously <laughs> post their strangest and most eccentric behavior. Now, some of this stuff is weird, but um, it is hilarious. Here's one of the weirder ones. It's called Fake Hand Washing. This woman wrote, well, actually, it could be a man, I don't know. I don't wash my hands every time after going to the bathroom because I don't want to aggravate my dry skin too much. But I want everyone to think I've washed my hands, so after I flush, I turn on the faucet and let the water <laughs> run for people to hear. I want it to be believable, though, so I mime washing my hands to make sure I let the water run for exactly how long it would take for me to really do it. Now, if you think that's gross, 788 people have commented on that post and said, me too. <laughs> okay, and this one I love. It's, <laughs> it's called Any Requests, Don't Kill Me. All right. If I am home alone and decide to take a shower, I get really scared that someone will break into my house and kill me when I'm naked and vulnerable. To keep this from happening, I sing different genres of songs in the shower. Rap, show tunes, country. I do this in hopes that the killer will enjoy one of these types of music <laughs> and, <laughs> and decide against killing me. <laughs> All right, so in-house, we're calling this book Post Secret for Neuroses. It is chock full of voyeurism and laughs. It's hilarious, so um, do yourselves a favor and check this one out. Next up, we have The Hidden by Tobias Hill. This takes place during a 2004 archaeological dig in Sparta, where a close-knit group searches for buried traces of a formidable ancient power. Ben Mercer is a latecomer to the dig and finds himself drawn to the charisma of the members of this group. They all have something to hide, they're all incredibly loyal to one another, and uh, they're a little sketchy. So Ben is an archaeology student running from his failed marriage and baby daughter, and he's willing to join the excavation no matter the cost. He has too much to escape, and he can't go back home. The Hidden ends up becoming a fascinating study of group dynamics, and it's a look at the games we play to stay in control. It interweaves scenes of ancient Sparta with present day events, and it's a page turner with substance it's impossible to put down. And next up we have The Sandfish by Maha Gargash. Um, this book is set in the 1950s in what makes up Dubai and the United Arab Emirates today. Having grown up in a really isolated place with parents who were indifferent to the ways of society, 17-year-old Nora is unlike other women in her country. She's willful and fiercely independent. She won't listen to anyone. When her mother dies and her father goes mad, her brother assumes responsibility for the family, and he forces her into an arranged marriage. Nora refuses and flees to a nearby village where she falls in love for the first time with a man who truly recognizes her beauty and her independence and her spirit. 
But this man is also promised to another, so Nora is heartbroken. She returns home and consents to be married to the original uh, man who she was supposed to be with, and he's a rich pearl merchant. The shape of her life changes forever as a result of this event, and uh, the story takes its title from an animal that Nora had encountered in the desert, the sandfish, a desert skink that she once spotted in the mountains when she was walking. In its panic at her intrusion, it dove itself into the rocks again and again until it bashed its snout and died. Just like the sandfish, Nora is stuck in the wrong place struggling to escape, and the book is incredibly poignant, and uh, it's really a window into a culture that has frequently been shrouded in mystery. It's a must-read. Um, it's incredibly interesting, and it's also a very beautiful story. And then we have Ten Story Love Song by Richard Millward. Um, this is quite different from the previous book. Richard is a fellow 20-something and something of a prodigy. His debut novel, Apples, was published at the tender age of 21, um, which makes me feel a little bit guilty. But <laughs> it garnered a cult following in the UK. Now, with his latest book, he's written an arresting new novel, which spans one dynamite massive paragraph. The whole book is a paragraph, um, <laughs> just to clarify. Ten Story Love Song follows the inhabitants of an apartment building. Uh, Bobby the artist, who rises to stardom and uh, ends up heavily uh, sedated with drugs. Johnny, who attempts to stop stealing and please his girlfriend in bed. Truck driver Alan and his obsession with patrolling the local schoolyard. Ten Story Love Song is a difficult novel to explain, as you could probably tell, but uh, not at all difficult to enjoy. It's a cutting but charismatic portrait of a deeply dysfunctional, creative, and drug-sodden world. The Body and the Slay by Katherine Hall Page. This book will be out in October, and we do have galleys available. And this is the 18th um, book in the Faith Fairchild series. Um, it follows Faith Fairchild, and um, this, although this is the 18th book, this is actually the first one that's set during Christmas. And it's set on Sandpier Island in Maine, and um, basically they discover a body of a young woman in a sleigh, and um, Come to find out she was a troubled girl, she um, was a drug addict, so they pretty much feel that she kind of killed herself. Um, consequently, consequently, they also find, a, a local woman also finds a newborn in a manger in her barn um, on Christmas Eve. And um, once again, there are no real clues as far as who killed the woman or if the woman killed herself or um, who actually left the baby there except for just a brief note. And um, the truth that comes out of this really is connected to what will ultimately become a timeless Christmas story. Um, one thing that I will say about Catherine Hall Page is that she is probably one of my favorite authors um, at Harper. She is a phenomenal author. She is a great presenter. She is a sweetheart. And even more, she is so concerned with me to the point that she wants to get me married very soon. <laughs> <laughs> She, but, and, and on top of that, she also has a, a deep devotion to libraries and librarians. I mean, all of our authors do, but she really, truly loves librarians. Um, the book actually is dedicated to all of you. And um, she talks about how she first got started in the library, her working in the library in high school, um, how when she was shopping around colleges and she discovered the college she wanted to go to, it was the library that actually sold her. And um, just really quickly in the back, in her author's note, she says, Arthur, or Andrew Carnegie suggested, let there be light, with the rays of a rising sun be set in the stone above the entrances to his free libraries. It's as apt now as it was in the 19th century. Yes, librarians are keepers of the light as well as matchmakers, and it's a match made in heaven. This dedication, the dedication of this book is long overdue. So definitely check her out if you haven't. She's a wonderful author. The book will be out in October. <laughs> 